Welcome, welcome to another accounting lecture with the financial controller, Bill Hanna here. In today's video, we're going to be discussing the chart of accounts and we're going to be going over the basic definition and why we need it for. And then I'm going to show you how to set it up from scratch for an example company in a way that's going to make sense for three different parties. The first one is you, the accountant, in a way that's going to make sense to you and your daily work. And secondarily is going to be management and investors. And how do you read the financial statements? So we're going to draw a line from the financial statements back to the chart of accounts and then the third party is the auditor who's going to be auditing these financial statements so we're going to make uh, sure that it's going to make sense for all these three parties this is the topic of today's video so stick around all right so what is the chart of accounts well the chart of accounts is just a fancy way of saying the list of accounts or the listing of the accounts. And these are all of the financial categories that go behind the scene in creating the financial statements. So for example, if you look at the income statement, the first line item you'll see typically is sales revenue. Well, in the chart of accounts, you create multiple accounts, each one representing the different revenue streams. So if your business have multiple revenue streams, let's say three, you create three accounts in a chart of accounts, each one of them will capture the activity in each one of these revenue streams, right? And then when you create the financial statements, you can go ahead and group these three different accounts into one line item, sales revenue on the income statement. So it's pretty simple. It's just a listing of all of the accounts that go behind the scene to categorize the business transactions. And then you can group these together and create the financial statements. All right. So the example company we're looking at is a social software company called Spa Booker and Spa Booker is in the business of creating a marketplace for spas. If you are a consumer and you're looking to book a spa treatment, you go on the website and you book a spa treatment just like you do with Uber and Lyft and these kind of platforms. So this is a software platform, Spa Booker, and you're hired as the controller or the accounting manager and you're looking to um, revamp the chart of accounts. You look at a chart of accounts to see if it makes sense. And the first thing I like to do is to bring things back to the basics, right? So what I do is I consider the accounting equation assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. And then owner's equity is broken down to stock, which is the owner contribution and then retain earnings. Uh, retain earnings is the uh, accumulation of profit in the business. And it's basically made up of revenue minus expenses. Now with the chart of accounts, um, typically what you'll see is that you create a set of accounts that begin with the digit one, uh, for assets, digit two for liabilities, three for equity accounts, four for revenue, and then for expenses, you have a five and six accounts. The five accounts are gonna be your cost of sales accounts, six are gonna be your operating expenses accounts. Now in just one minute here, we're gonna go over specific examples of a balance sheet and income statement and how to set up the chart of accounts. But I wanted to show you that in almost every situation in accounting, you can bring it back to the basic accounting equation. The accounting equation here, assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity, is gonna have in it all of the different categories that you're gonna to need to break down a chart of accounts, which is assets, liabilities, equity. Equity includes in it all of the stock contribution or, or owner's contribution, and then in return earnings includes revenues and expenses. So the main accounting equation includes all of the basic categories in it. Now let's go through the balance sheet and income statement and make sense of how to set up a chart of account that's gonna make our life easier as accountants and make it more intuitive for management to read the financial statements and for auditors to be able to audit the work that you're doing as an accountant. All right, so let's begin with the balance sheet. And what we have here is the balance sheet for spa book Inc. as of January 31, 2022. And the first thing you'll see is cash and cash equivalents under current assets. Now, with the cash accounts, I like to create one account for each of the bank accounts that I have. So if I have three or four different bank accounts, I like to create one account on my chart of accounts for each of those. And the reason is, if you combine these bank accounts into one account in your chart of accounts, it's gonna make it very difficult for you to reconcile the bank at month end. And what I mean by reconcile is that you get your ending balance from the bank statement and match it to your ending balance on the books. And any difference is something that you need to book an expense you need to uh, record or an income or maybe cash receipts from a customer that you need to record. This is the bank reconciliation. And if you combine multiple different bank accounts into one account and you, into your chart of accounts, it's gonna be near impossible to reconcile a month end. And so it's always gonna be better to break this down one account for each different bank account. This is for uh, your cash accounts. Four accounts receivable, 
I like to have one account for receivables from customers and another for other receivables. And the one for customers, that's gonna be my main receivable. I'm gonna use that account for all of my operations in the business and recording my billing. When I record an invoice, it's gonna be debit to receivable and credit to sales revenue. And so this is gonna be my main receivable account from customers and another for other receivable that's not gonna be core to the business. This is other items that I'm gonna be receiving. For example, if I have to collect taxes from an employee and remit to the IRS for a stock transaction, I'm gonna record that a receivable from the employee and then a payable to the government. That's gonna be for the other receivable activity that's not gonna be core to the business. That's gonna be other receivable. The next major line item on the balance sheet is gonna be property, plant, and equipment. And for the property, plant, and equipment accounts, I like to create one account for each type of fixed asset. So if my business, in this case here, Spot Booker, has maybe computer equipment, and then maybe office furniture as the main asset classes, I like to create one account on a chart of accounts for each of these items. So I'm gonna track computer equipment on one account, and then I'm gonna track office furniture in a second account, and then I'm gonna create two accumulated depreciation contra asset account, and we're gonna be talking about this in detail in future accounting lecture. A contra asset is a reduction to the asset because basically you'll be accumulating the depreciation for that asset and reducing the value of that asset that way. And all of these principles here are covered in extreme detail in the Controller Academy, which is an online course that I created to help you become a corporate controller. Now, the online course is a comprehensive resource for you and it's broken down into five different modules. The first one is gonna be the accounting equation, which is explaining the foundation and the basics of accounting, which is a combination of accounting 101 and 102. The second module is gonna be how to record transactions in the real world. And these are transactions ranging from the typical billing and expenses transactions, and also the difficult equity transactions and examples of everything throughout. Module three is gonna be about month in close and how to execute an efficient month in closing process in the real world with examples and preparation of financial statements. Module number four is accounts payable and how to run a comprehensive accounts payable process that makes sense. And then module number five is gonna be about financial statements analysis. So go ahead and check it out. I'm gonna leave a link down below. We get to the liabilities section and under current liabilities is accounts payable. I like to create multiple accounts. So for accounts payable, I like to create an account for my trade accounts payable, which is my payable to vendors in the running of the operations of the business. Um, and then I like to create one for payables to employees. Uh, these are gonna be all of the reimbursements to employees at month end. So empl your employees will be spending money on travel, entertainment, going out to meet customers, all these things, right? And they'll be owed money up month end for their expenses. And that's where I'm gonna record my payables to employees. And I'd like to create a third payable account, other payable, and that's the account I'm gonna book things in it that are not uh, core to the operation of the business. And an example of that, like I mentioned before, is that if you are collecting some sort of tax from an employee or child support or a certain garnishment that you're then gonna owe to another government body, then you record the payable here to the government. And we'll go through some examples of these things in future lectures, but for now, I just want you to be aware that for accounts payable, the ideal setup is to have these three uh, chart of accounts, accounts for accounts payable, payable to employee, and then other payable. All right, up next on the current liabilities is gonna be credit cards. And credit cards are gonna be those credit cards that you issue in the business to your executives so that they can go out and transact and do business faster uh, with a credit card. And so in this case, I like to create multiple accounts, one for each of the credit cards that I have. And that's gonna be uh, easier for me than when I reconcile a month end to the credit card statement if I have uh, separate accounts, one for each of the credit cards. So I'm gonna create one for the CEO and one for the CFO. I'm gonna include uh, in the account name, the last four digits of the credit card number, so it's easier for me to identify which credit cards, just in case uh, this, the CEO has maybe two different credit cards, so each one will be identified with the last four digits of the card itself. Okay, now for the next item is gonna be accrued expenses, and I like to create that into one account in a chart of accounts, and then create or manage the detail in Excel. So the detail of accrued expenses is gonna be the detail by vendor, and I can manage that in Excel, uh, and then create just one account in a chart of accounts to, to track the liability of accrued expenses, right? If you try to create multiple accounts, each one to track one vendor accrual, 
So you might end up with like maybe 5, 10, 20 accrual accounts, which is going to make it super crowded on your chart of accounts and make it uh, less efficient for uh, your reconciliation. So I recommend for accrual expenses to create one account and then track uh, the reconciliation of it or the detail, the breakdown of it by vendor in Excel. Okay, same thing in the next line item, deferred revenue. So for deferred revenue, I'll do the same thing. I'm gonna create one account and a chart of accounts and then track it down uh, in Excel uh, by customer. So deferred revenue or unearned revenue is the revenue that you are gonna, you're gonna earn in the future. So you receive money today, the customer pays you $100 today for a product or service that's gonna be performed or delivered in the future. So you haven't earned it yet. That's why it's sitting here as a liability. Okay, now, up next is going to be uh, loans. And so for loans or uh, long-term debt, I like to create multiple accounts, again, each for the different loan accounts. And again, that's going to make it easier for me to reconcile a month end to the loan statement, right? I reconcile my books to the loan statement. It's going to be easier for me. And it's going to be easier for the auditor as well when they're conducting their audit to get one loan statement and compare it to one chart of accounts in the general ledger um, rather than combining all of your loans into one account, which won't make any sense. That's for long-term debt. Now for the equity account or the shareholders equity, typically you wanna create, break that down into multiple accounts. And so the first account that I typically see is gonna be the common stock at par value. Right, so when you uh, issue a stock, par value typically is pennies, right? So maybe like one penny, maybe 10 cents. Uh, that's gonna be the par value at which you're issuing the stock. And then any additional uh, funds you're getting beyond that one penny is gonna be additional paid in capital. And so I like to create uh, and track it by uh, funding round. So for example, if I have a seed round, I'm gonna create one account for, to track the seed round and then a secondary account here to track the A round. So I'm tracking the different rounds and the amounts of additional paid in capital for each of these funding rounds. And then I'm gonna create an, a, another additional paid in capital that's gonna be for uh, stock options and we'll discuss in a future lecture uh, how to record stock option expense and how that affects the equity accounts um, and so you're going to have create an additional paying capital for options and then you'll create one for return earnings and that's going to be uh, the account that's going to accumulating the profits in the business into uh, the equity account retain earnings all right let's look at the income statement and come up with the accounts that will go in a chart of accounts from the income statement for spa booker and we have the income statement here for the month ended january 31 uh, 2022. So when we look at it, the first thing we'll see is sales or sales revenue. And you want to create multiple uh, accounts in your chart of accounts, one for uh, each of the revenue streams. And so in this case here, uh, Spa Booker is in the business of being the middleman between consumers and spas. So when you're a consumer and you book a spa treatment, uh, the company or spa booker will get a transaction fee or maybe 10 to 20% of that transaction. So transaction fee is one of the revenue streams. And the other is going to be the platform fees. So the company collects um, a fixed monthly amount from each, spa, from each spa for being on the platform. So it could be $200, $300 from each spa just for being on the platform. So you want to create uh, two or in this case here, two accounts uh, in a chart of accounts, one for platform fee and one for transaction fees. So you can track each of the revenue streams separately. Next is gonna be cost of sales. And when we get the cost of sales, it's important here to distinguish between two types of cost or expenses in a business. The first one is gonna be cost of sales, and then the second is gonna be operating expenses. Now, cost of sales are gonna be those uh, costs or expenses that are associated with revenue making, right? So in this case here, we have server costs. So uh, I'm using a cloud server like Amazon Web Services or something similar to that, and that's what I'm using to host all of the activity that's going on on the website. And that's gonna be directly associated with making revenue or making money, right? So that's why it's called cost of sales. It's not an operating expense. Operating expenses are gonna be things like rent or salaries to supporting staff and things like that. Uh, that's gonna be operating expenses. But cost of sale is highly scrutinized uh, because it, it's gonna be directly associated with gross margins. So everybody's looking at gross margins this, mer this business makes 50% gross margin or 60 or 80% gross margin, the higher the better. And so it's highly scrutinized by both uh, investors and auditors uh, into making sure that what goes into cost of sales uh, are things that are associated with uh, making sales in a business. 
And so in this case here, um, we identified that the things that are gonna be associated with cost of sales are gonna be server costs or Amazon Web Services and the customer support salaries and benefits, right? So you create uh, one account for AWS and then one parent account for customer support salaries and benefits. And underneath that, we'll create a multiple children account and we'll look into the setup now in QuickBooks in a few minutes and see how to create a parent-child relationship when it comes uh, to these things. So you wanna create a parent account for that houses all of the salaries and benefits and then children accounts uh, for the sub things, which is salaries, medical insurance, 401k, and all these things. Okay, so that's for cost of sales. Now, we get to operating expenses, and these are the overhead expenses that are not directly correlated with making sales. And these are gonna be uh, salaries and benefits to supporting staff like uh, general and admin, um, research and development, uh, and things like that. Uh, that also is gonna cover things like rent, uh, software expenses to run the business, and other things that you need to run the business. And so, for that you create multiple accounts and it's gonna be one account to track uh, each of the major activities of the business. So rent expense, software expense, uh, and then you get to salaries and benefits. And here also I like to create a parent account that's gonna house all of the salaries and benefits, uh, but then children accounts to track each of the activity that goes under these, uh, under this major bucket. And we'll go through some examples in the future accounting lectures on how to record these transactions so that you get uh, more of a, a full picture onto how to run this operation here. Okay, now uh, the next item is gonna be non-operating expenses and we have multiple accounts, one for federal income tax, one for state income tax, depreciation and interest. And these are the expenses that are not directly uh, correlated to the operation of the business. So we call them non-operating non-operating expenses. So those will go with the seven accounts and those are gonna be uh, taxes, depreciation, interest. Now let's transition to the accounting software so I can show you quickly how to set up a chart of accounts. And in this case, we're using QuickBooks Online, but your business could be using any other accounting software, uh, NetSuite, Sage Intact, Zero. There are many, many different kinds of ERP software out there, but the main, the main principle is the same, which is creating the number logic for your uh, chart of accounts, following the logic of the income statement and the balance sheet, and creating a set of accounts. And so with QuickBooks, when we go into QuickBooks and we go to navigation, accounting, chart of accounts, QuickBooks will come with a set of a chart of accounts that's gonna be standard, and you can go ahead and customize it, delete the accounts that you don't need, and create ones that you wanna create from scratch. And so in this case, for example, I have cash, and QuickBooks Online is only giving me one account for cash, so I'm gonna go ahead and change the name of it and create a secondary account, because if you remember when we looked at cash, we wanted to create two different accounts, one for Chase checking 2134 and one for the second Chase account that we have. So the way that we do this is to go ahead and click on edit. So there is a pencil here that says edit. And this allows you to create edits on bulk. And so I'm gonna go ahead and change the name of it. Chase checking and the last four digits of the account and the account number, if I remember correctly, it was 11001. And then I click save. Now I have my uh, Chase account here and then I have a secondary Chase account for my vendor payments. So I'm gonna go ahead and click new. And it's gonna ask me here, what kind of account is this? Is income, expenses, banks, assets? So I'm gonna go ahead and say bank. It's gonna say save account under, I'm gonna choose bank accounts, right? And then it's gonna say tax form selection. Um, not super relevant right now, but this could be something that's gonna be handy when you prepare the tax returns. Um, the account name, I remember this was the name Chase Vendor Payment. I'm gonna paste that here, and then the account number, we chose 11002. Description, 
Uh, the description could be the same as the account name, which is um, Chase Vendor Payment, uh, the last four digits, three, four, five, six. Okay, now you'll be done right here um, unless you have a, an opening balance. So let's say this is an account that exists from before um, and you have a balance. So you go ahead and say the as of date. So you can say beginning of this year, beginning of this month, today, or some other date. So for example, if it's some other date, you go ahead and click that and then you put in the date in this case, and let's say, you know, the balance as of uh, March 31, 2022, um, you know, the balance was, for example, $100,000. You put in the ending balance, and then you click on save. So now we created our account right here, which is Chase Vendor Payment 3454. And now from here, you go with the same logic and you go through this chart of accounts. This is the basic chart of accounts that comes with QuickBooks Online. You go through it and you delete or add accounts that you need. So for example, if one of the accounts here, you don't need it. So let's say inventory asset. The business that we have here is not a business that has any kind of inventory. So I can go ahead and click on this arrow here and make it inactive, right? So when you make this inactive, you're not going to see it in this list again. So this way you don't have to clutter your chart of accounts with an account that you don't want to deal with. Um, and you can go ahead and pretty much add account numbers to match the logic that we created here and uh, either add new accounts or subtract accounts that you don't need in your setup.